Stormcast Eternals. You could say I'm a little bit of a fan. This is the current collection of Stormcast Eternals that I have constructed. I actually have quite a bit more still in boxes that I need to construct. An interesting fact about me and Stormcast Eternals is I currently, to this date, have every single Stormcast miniature that has ever been produced. I have a complete collection of Stormcast and that's something that I hope to continue forever. I can only imagine 10, 15 years from now when the Stormcast Eternal range is fleshed out like Space Marines. Although currently I think there might actually be more active Stormcast miniatures than there are active Space Marine units. It's possible. I don't know. I need to check that actually. That'd be kind of interesting to know. Um, but yeah, Stormcast are a huge part of my Age of Sigmar fascination and love. I know they're not for everybody, but that's totally fine. Everybody gets to like and dislike whatever they like. But for me, Stormcast are awesome. I have about 30% of my collection painted and obviously 70% not painted. Um, tons of models built and not even sprayed and so on and so forth. So I really do need to get cracking on more of these miniatures. Now, Games Workshop very kindly sent me out the new Dawnbringer set, the Cripborn's Storm Wing set. And for today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to paint the dragon from that uh, set, the beautiful Cripborn himself. He is looking splendid. Um, absolutely awesome piece. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint the dragon himself. If you're interested in knowing how to paint the rider, that is gonna be a Patreon exclusive video this week uh, for all my patrons. So the dragon is uh, for everybody. The uh, rider on top is just for my patrons. Before I get into the video, I just wanna say a little announcement that I am going to be um, basically running my Twitch stream all weekend and I'm going to be live at the Age of Sigmar Six Nations event. So I am going to be the commentator for the Age of Sigmar Six Nations across the entire weekend. That's this weekend coming. So if you're interested in checking that out, make sure you drop by my Twitch stream on the Saturday and the Sunday. It will be two very long days of streaming, but I'm going to be hosting a game each and every round. And giving you guys some commentary, showing you some cool armies, uh, interviews with the captains and stuff like that. So it's gonna be a very interesting and fun weekend. It's something I haven't actually done before. So a little bit nervous. So the more people that show up, show support, that'd be fantastic. Okay, without further ado, I'm gonna jump into this video and show you guys how to paint the amazing dragon from this new set. Let's get into it. Okay, and this is the beautiful new dragon that the new Cryptborn miniature rides around on. I don't actually know if it has a name of itself. I should have really checked that, so sorry. But uh, it's absolutely immense. It's so beautiful. It's not one of the larger dragons. It's kind of one of the smaller dragons, which makes perfect sense. And it fits in with the flock of dragons that he comes with in his box set, which I think is very cool. And I'm going to be painting him up in a kind of a deep, rich red tone. Now, this particular week, I'm going to be focused on uh, quite a few Age of Sigmar videos, mainly because I want to build a little bit of hype around Age of Sigmar for my uh, streaming of the Six Nations this weekend for Age of Sigmar. And we have over on Twitch, so if that's something that you are interested in, watching some competitive games, some funny commentary, and some all-around good time for many, many hours of next weekend, uh, then make sure you check out the links below to my Twitch, give it a follow, and then jump on this weekend and have some fun with us. So I started off with, of course, Fleshed Hair's red contrast uh, over the base coat. My base coat is a solid coat of Chaos Black, and then like a light dusting, kind of a light to heavy dusting of Grey Seer. That gives me the tone and colors that I like to use when it comes to using contrast and any other speed paints and stuff like that. And obviously using contrast over these really nice um, kind of uh, skin tones and stuff like that, it just it just works a treat. So the scales just pop off the model. And as you can see by the, uh, the wing here in this shot, you can see how detailed these pieces actually are. I mean, back in the day, the wings and membranes would be pretty much completely smooth. These days they are so full of detail that as soon as you throw a contrast, um, across them it just catches all the detail and it makes them pop so I'm not going to do a hell of a lot of work to make these wings look really nice we're going to throw contrast over them and then we're going to have a couple of dry brushes of some brighter reds and pinks and that's going to give us what I think is a really nice red dragon skin tone very much like smog feelings uh, at least that's how I feel about it obviously I like to overload the brush and put quite a lot of contrast on with each pass and then manipulate and move that contrast around trying to get it into all the nice recesses and stuff like that i find this gives me a better coat of red and i'm much happier with the result so this is the dragon after a single coat of red contrast and as you can see it already looks really good i'm now going to be working up the base so normally i don't show you guys how to do the basings of uh pieces in videos because People tend to base miniatures differently to match their own armies. This time I thought I'd throw it in just for a little bit of effect as this guy has a pretty unique base. Um, 
I will be going through it all, but kind of fast and loose, so you're not going to see it all. I will talk all the way through it. So Basilicanum Grey Contrast is what I use for all the rocky parts of that huge, big, cracked and crumbling arch that the dragon has landed on top of. It's a really nice piece. As a lot of people do rebel against the idea of the... There's like two schools of thinking. People like the flying stands. I'm not a... I don't like love or hate the flying stands. I think they serve their purpose and they're fine. They don't detract from a model for me. And then some people love these big scenic bases that they're landing on, which I actually agree. They they look fant absolutely fantastic. But I think with the... I think I have 12 Stormcast dragons now, which is quite a lot of dragons. I can't have them all landing in weird places. I'd rather have some of them in big flying poses. I guess it's kind of two schools. I wonder what you guys think. If Let me know in the comments below. Do you prefer a model to have a flying stand or a big crazy scenic base? can never quite decide. Obviously with the new Space Marine Assault Marines that just came out, there's a, a lot of hubbub about them jumping off their tactical rocks to make them look like they're flying. It doesn't bother me at all, but it seems to be bothering quite a few people. Okay, so the first thing I did was add a corn red dry brush just to start off the process. And then what I did is, as I grabbed some pink horror and I slowly just mixed in more and more pink horror into that mix, I went lightly over the model more raised areas I went to more pure pink and the bottom areas went more corn red just adds a nice bit of shade a nice bit of definition you can't really go wrong because the wings are so crumpled and so folded that the shade is going to catch them in all different ways so if you accidentally go too bright on the bottom or the top or vice versa it won't really matter nobody's going to really know so as you can see I'm going quite heavy with the brush here but there's not a lot on the brush after I do that, I like to go in and just add just a little bit of a really kind of pale bone color. I've always done this. It's something that I've uh, I've done with painting monsters for years and years and years. A really, really light dry brush of a bone color just to catch the edges and sharp parts of those scales. It highlights it really nicely. It doesn't really change the color. It still reads as a red, kind of pinky reddish dragon, which is what I wanted. But all the sharper details on the model will pop a little bit more. And it looks a lot paler here. That's actually just the really bright lights above it. I promise you it's not actually that bony uh, or pale or pallid uh, as it's coming up in that shot here. You will see at the end of the video when I have some high-res photos of it, you will see that it is not, in fact, this kind of as pastel as it's looking here. And of course, going against the grain and scraping that along the, uh, the sharper scales, just adding in those highlights a little bit makes all the difference and this is basically how I'm going to finish off the skin on the dragon after that I'm just going to start working on other details so obviously like he's got a little bit of tufts of uh, fur hanging off which is kind of strange for a dragon but it's a nice excuse to add in an extra bit of color we're going to be working on the mouth I always love working on monster mouths so teeth and tongues and gums and stuff like that they always added a really nice effect to models and I always like them quite a bit going back in on the base we're going to use lead belcher to paint in the iron grates that is going in underneath that arch and it actually comes through the rock as well, which I miss. So you can see the spike under his left foot there. And then there's these like little like uh, bolts coming through. So I went back later on as I noticed that that's what they were. They're holding those iron grates in place and I did them again in silver. Super quick and easy uh, step. Like I said, we want to make this base look nice. You can see the skin here in better effect. You can see it's not as pale as it looked before. Like shots like this make it look really pale. <laughs> Bit of black templar and we're going to use this for that tufts of fur as well. I want to darken it down a little bit and the black fur will uh, break up the red a little bit. Very simple, one coat. I'm not actually going to touch this again. That's it, one coat of black. Because of the red and the bone tones underneath it, it catches it really nice. The contrast does its job in uh, shading um, and highlighting with just that one pass of the paint. Obviously with this I did all the fur bits and then I did every claw across the model, which is of course on all four of his limbs. He's got his clawed feet and then the wing membranes on the wings uh, have uh, kind of claws and spikes on them all the way along. So they got a coat of Black Templar as well. It's then time to move on to the Retributor armor and I did this for the entire base coat or uh, the entire armor set. Uh, there are these like skull motifs built into the uh, armor piece. You can decide to just do them as like stylized armor and just hit them with the gold as well if you want to be even faster again. But the way they do show them on the boxes, they are inset skulls. So I did actually... Um, kind of take my time be careful not to hit them with the gold so that I can hit them with a contrast later on and paint them up in bone just to help break it all up but like I said I would not hold you like if this was a unit and I had to paint five or six of these things I would definitely be painting those uh, skulls in gold as well as if they're just stylized which kind of makes more sense than actually having inset skulls into the model but this is I own as Cryptborn he is a, a crazy stormcast eternal whose job it is is to try and figure out how to stop the stormcast from degrading as they constantly come back in the reforging. So I guess that's a 
pretty gnarly way of having like skull motifs on him. He's obviously like a basically a chaplain as well. Sigur Brown was then brought in and we carefully painted this on all of the straps and bridling and all those bits and pieces that held the armor in place um, on this particular dragon. One of the cool things that I really like about Stormcast dragons is they tend not to have any reins. The dragons themselves are like really sentient. They are not beasts. They are incredibly intelligent creatures. They can get reforged as well when they die. So people ever wondered that they're actually they are created by Sigmar as well. So once they die, they can be reforged. Um, so they have no need to be reined in and controlled. They know where to go. They know where the rider wants to go and how to do it. And there's very much a symbiosis between the two. They trust each other. Okay, now it's time for that Agro's Dunes. And we're going to paint that into all those skull bits and all of the um, the ribbons and robes and stuff that is hanging off. Not robes, sorry. All the ribbons and tassels hanging off of the dragon. We're going to get a little coat of Agro's Dunes in there as well some next to the saddle this is a quick and easy step like i said it helps to break up the amount of gold on the model sandra dust was then brought in and i highlighted or base coated in all of the teeth and you'll notice that i did do a volopus pink stage and i painted the inside of the mouth volopus pink um and the the seat and back of the seat uh on his saddle i did that with the volopus pink as well and after that, we did Zandri Dust as the base coat for all the teeth. Quick and easy stage, getting those sharp gnashers uh, base coated in. It really does bring a dragon or any monster to life. I, I think that's why I enjoy painting the mouths so much on all my beasts. Is the model can just look like one solid, you know, red and gold. Can't really tell what it's, like, where it's going. And then once you see that mouth, it, it kind of pulls everything together. Reichland Flesh Shade was then brought in and we use this on all the parts that aren't the red skin. We're going to base coat it with right confess shade once again it's another quick and easy step it's going to add a real rich and warmth to the gold to the skulls to the parchment to all the inside of the mouth teeth gums tongue all that as well it's going to get done now what i didn't show here is i actually grabbed some agrax earth shade as well and i base coated in the um the stonework on the base as well so this is what i meant by i'm going to finish the base but i'm not going to show you too much about it so all i did was grab kind of a medium shade gray and dry brush all the stone bits. Then I grabbed a brighter gray, dry brush all the stone bits again, but just a little bit lighter. Nothing crazy. After that, we jumped over to a lead belcher and we dry brushed all of the metallic grating. Once again, another extremely quick step. All I want to do is add a little bit of shine back into the grating. We've grabbed some riser rust to go over the brown texture paste that I put on. This is dark earth from AK Interactive. It's what I like to use for my texture paste. Uh, Rise of Rust dry burst all over that. Once again, super quick and effective. Doesn't take a lot to do. It adds a nice bit of warmth and richness to the base. After that, we go in with a much lighter dry brush of any bone or kind of tan color. To add the final highlight into the ground. And I also usually dry brush up the kind of the lower parts of the stone with this as well to help blend those two parts together. This bit is always hard to film. Big models are always hard to film because the camera just wants to focus on the closest bit. Okay, after that I also rimmed the base black. And with the base finished and the model all shaded, it's looking almost finished. So we don't have a lot much to do or a lot left to do um, to finish him off. I think he looks fantastic as he is. I really like how that pinky red skin tone came out. It's one of the things about my Stormcast dragons, I quite like them all to be different skin tones, so I don't want this uniform look across all the dragons. I want them all to be quite different. Okay, so we're going to go in now and just finish off the last of the details. So we're going to go with Lead Belcher first. And we're just going to add a few uh, highlights to the gold and metallic parts on the model. So with the gold, as you can see, it's just a few kind of stabby highlights. We're not going to go crazy. I would dry brush it if I could, but I do not want to hit any of the gold or any of the red dragon skin. So... Some kind of like small scratchy highlights, like I said, a little bit of overbrushing. If you can get it there without hitting the red, that's fine as well. Will add a really nice effect. Obviously, this is kind of like a tarnished gold. Even though these Stormcast journals may seem old, these dragons can still be quite ancient. And the gold armor as well can be quite old. So we want that to kind of match in with the aesthetic of the guys. Screaming Skull was then brought in and we highlighted up all of the bone parts. So then we started with the teeth. And 
In fact, the screaming skull here is the only part we're going to be using with is the teeth. All the other bones we're going to have to work up with a little bit of Zandri dust first, and then we're going to go in with some screaming skull as a kind of secondary highlight. It just makes things a little bit easier. As you can see, I'm taking my time. I'm being careful. I'm not worried about like a solid, smooth coat of any kind of bone. And we're just a nice, light dry brush will do the job. With that done, you can use like a lighter pink to highlight the tongue and stuff if you want. But other than that, I call this finish. You may notice I did not highlight the seat or the back of the saddle because the, the character who rides it will be covering all that up as well. So there's absolutely no point. I add a little bit of blue paint in for his eyes and that's it. I am super pleased with another finished Stormcast dragon. I think that's only three or four of my dragons painted so far. Here is the rider himself. I've painted him up as well, but he is going to be a Patreon exclusive video, like I said. But as you can see, when you combine the two parts together, you do get this finished, beautiful dragon rider. And I was crypt born on his beautiful Drake. I'm sure he'll be leading a Stormcast eternal army of mine in the near future. I've always been interested in trying to do an entire dragon force, and I think now is probably the time to do it with the amount of dragons that I have. Here's a couple of still images of the awesome model himself, done up looking well. Like I said, I'm quite pleased with the result. If you guys want to see more Age of Sigmar content, please make sure that you like this video so I can see that it's getting enough support, and let me know in the comments below what kind of... Uh, videos you would like to see for Age of Sigmar moving forward. I obviously have the Sylvaneth kind of new beetle dude to do and I've got a lot of Cities of Sigmar to do so just let me know what you want to see and hopefully I can provide that for you. Okay guys and there we have it. There's the video on how to paint up the dragon. I showed you guys at the end what he's going to look like with the rider on top. Now like I said at the beginning of this video if you're interested in knowing how to paint the rider you can check that in the description below and get involved with my patron and then you can check out that video as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did make sure you give it a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed and if you're interested in following along with the Six Nations coverage this weekend it'll be over on my Twitch which is also linked down below Saturday and Sunday pretty much all day Irish time so it's going to be a good old time if you're an Age Sigmar fan make sure you check it out all right guys thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next video